everybody. How are you? Thank you so much for joining. Yes, Patty looks a little different tonight. <laughs> this was, well, first of all, welcome to Real Law State with Patty and Kate. I could go like this. Woo, woo, woo. I'm Patty today, though. That's you are. Cool. Yeah, he's, yeah, he likes, he likes that. So anyway, so we had asked Troy to come on. And honestly, there's not enough room for the three of us. And Patty and I had to fight for who got to interview Troy. So anyways, I won. So... The reason why I asked Troy to be on this is because he has a really interesting story. And the story is, so I want you to pay attention to this and I want you to share the story out because there's so much negativity going on right now. And like the, the moral of the story is, is finding, you know, finding beautiful things and finding great opportunities, you know, in, amidst a pandemic, right? So anyways, hi Troy. Hi. How are you doing tonight? I'm fantastic. He's, he is fantastic. So, <laughs> I'm always let, happy. Yeah, he is always happy. So let me just tell you a little bit about Troy. So we met like when you started looking for houses, I think when you were in college. Yeah. So college student calls and there's a couple fixer-uppers and he's like, yeah, I want to look at them. So I'm like, all right, sure. You know, he's a year older than my son, right? And so he, like, and they, they look alike except he's a redhead and my, my son's a brunette. But so I'm like, sure. And so we're looking at these houses and his mom and dad come and they're like, they're supportive and they're going to help him with it if it works out. And I'm like, are you, you know, like, are you, are you, do you commute? And he's like, no, 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 I'm, you know, I'm at school and blah, blah, blah. So I'm like, whatever. Right. So he did not buy a house then. However, uh, th this process continued after he graduated. And um, one thing I could tell you about his college experience that I found so remarkable. So I went to his wedding and I, and he's a bold realtor. I don't know if I forgot to tell you that part. Yeah. So he's a bold realtor. He works with us. Oh, yeah. and, and yes, now he is. And that's part of the story. But when he talks about people, like his friends, his sphere of influence, everybody is his best friend. And he says, yeah, you know, Johnny's my best friend. And then he goes, you know, I have a best friend and, and yeah, my best friend, you know, Ed wants this. And so everybody's a best friend. And I finally said to him one day, I'm like, Troy, like yeah. not everybody can be your best friend. He's like, no, they're all my best friends. It's, a level. it's like, yeah, he says it's a level, right? So it's a level like that's how, what it, and I love that. That's how good of a friend they are. And so recently, like, was it last time? When did you get married? September. So I was like a party crasher, a wedding crasher. Um, so he got married in September. And like, just to see his friends there and the way they danced and the way they like hung out and stuff, I said, they truly are best friends. And you're right. You have just, a lot of best friends. Yeah. Lucky. And I just, yeah, he is lucky. And, and they were so cool. And I felt so lucky to be able to experience that. And he's got, of course, a bomb wife also. She's a, adorable and amazing. So Caroline, I love you. We want you to be a bold realtor too, just saying. Anyway, so back to the story. So, so Troy became a, a realtor. So, so when we're looking at houses for the one that he bought, which was a two family in Mount Poison, how smart was that? I said, Troy, you have got to take this class. Yep. And I'm like, I was already, so I, so I like bribed him. I'm like, <laughs> I will give you like your part of this commission on your thing if you do it. And then I was working with his aunt. I'm like, I will give you your aunt, right? Mm -hmm. By the way, it was buying like a million dollar property. I'm like, I will give you your aunt, like just get your license because he just was so good. You know, you were that good. And when he came on, the thing was he would do anything to help anybody. And he's like super strong, right? So all we have the move outs and part of our bold, uh, our bold um, benefits to our buyers and sellers is that we will move you out. We will do the bold bus. And so like literally I saw him pick up like a, a like a couch with like one arm. <laughs> and I am, I shit you not. And I was like, oh my God. So anyways, he painted properties when we needed a FHA paint job. I mean, like Jesse was so awesome. And um, then, however, he his community mayorship, right? His his community pull started pulling on him. And what did you do? Did you do EMT? Yeah, I started that and I completed the course to try and pursue to be a local firefighter. And are you a firefighter yet? I am for the town of Mount Poison. So he became a EMT and then he pushed that up into be a firefighter for the town of Mount Poison. On the on-call department. So I've been doing that since a little before December and we got halfway through the academy and COVID canceled it. So we're actually going back again at the end of the month. Uh, so, so anyway, so he, he's embedded in this community. I mean, he was embedded before, wouldn't you say? Yeah, I'm a town. Yeah, he's a, a townie. Town. Yeah, he's a young townie. Yes. And he actually, you had a birthday yesterday. Yeah. How old are you? 26. 
26. Oh, I said on, the, on my little video, my little promo that you're 25. Mm -hmm. She's 26. Just turned 26, just yeah. turned 26 yeah. yesterday. Okay. So this is a 26 year old story, right? So by now you've almost been looking at houses for 10 years. Yeah. Just about, right? Yeah. yeah. So anyway, so that's not the part I want to talk about, but I just, for those of you who are in the business, right? And this is the thing, like, was this a master plan? No. How did it all kind of come about? I, I don't really know. I take every day one step at a time. So real estate fell in place because of you. And then I wanted to help the community more. And that led to the, the on-call fire department. Yeah. And then the, everything that happened with COVID has now led to my new venture. Yeah. So that's what we're really going to talk about, the co-venture. But what I want to point out here, which is like the thing that I think is significant, is he has a heart of service, right? He Everything decision he makes is from this position of helping someone. And literally, like, like anything, like, you, Troy, can you climb up on the roof and do, yeah, sure. Can you do, sure. Like just, he has a heart of service. And again, with his best friends and the people like they're like to know Troy is definitely to love Troy, right? Anyway, that's all to set up what has happened in COVID. And um, why don't you tell the story about how this came about? Well, I guess a lot of people may know, but a lot may not. And Well, 25,000 of you know, I know that. <laughs> essentially, um, my uncle's a lobsterman by trade. That's how he makes his living. And when in the beginning of COVID, they were still lobstering every day. Yeah. And they happened to be out lobstering on the day that the governor put the ban and shut down all restaurants. So as most of you know, the... So, so stop for one yeah. sec. So that means that these guys who make their living out on lobster boats. Yeah, and, selling and, to restaurants. Right, basically. selling to lobster, like to selling to directly to restaurants. They go out, they get their, their, their catch. Right, that's their livelihood. They come back and they sell them. Correct. And like the light switch went off. They, they were out, they came back in. They obviously weren't on their phones all day and they were told, sorry, we can't buy these. So, so in, in the course of one day, like their lives completely changed. Yeah. All right, so then what happened? So they had over 500 lobsters on their boat. And if people don't know, like they just can't live. Yeah, lobsters can't live. <laughs> they, you know, they live in the ocean. They can't just sit on a boat all day. So they were kind of saying, well, what are we going to do with 500 lobsters? So and my this uncle, is one boat. This yeah, it's just one, one boat. boat. 500 lobsters. And my uncle yeah. and I were just talking like, well, he's kind of like myself. We have a lot of best friends. And I said, well, why don't we just put them on Facebook and see, you know, if anyone would be interested. So we made a little Facebook post and shared it. And in the course of like three days, I think it shared like 175 times. Yeah. So we were going to. Did that feel big at the time? Yeah. Like that was like, oh my gosh, we weren't sure if we'd be able to sell 500 lobsters. And then all of a sudden we're getting messages from people in Connecticut that friends, friends shared our posts and they would love to buy some. Right. So this was, so this was when COVID, so state of emergency. So we're talking two months. Yeah. Two months ago. Two months. Okay. Now I'm going to, he's going to take you through some of the, the trials and tribulations here, yeah. but just as a, I'm going to help my uncle out. Let's start this thing on Facebook. Right now his Facebook page has 14,000. 975 likes or followers. So I need you guys to get him to 15K tonight, number one. But how did that happen? Like, how did you guys sharing a couple of things? Now I have yes. to tell you, like I got in line. So we all did, like, I mean, it was like a, like the, like the parade that go on now, like you got in line, like I can't even explain the experience of, of this all, right? So first of all, I'm in line and there's a woman who's a, a co-instructor, she lives in Boston. She's in front of me and she's beeping and she's going around. She's afraid you're gonna run out. And so she's like, what do you want me to get for you? And like, we have this great conversation and like, oh, this is like old home week. And so you pull up to the boats and like, there's these gorgeous, again, smiling hats, like happy people helping, you know, working this all out. And I think there were three boats that day. Yeah. It was a Mother's Day. I went on Mother's Day. And, and it was like, oh my God, this is such a magical experience. Was, and I think I said that, that to you. I think I probably cool. said yeah. you a, like text off. I'm like, oh my God. I'm like, no, this magical moment, yeah. you know, that is something special. So... So now continue so, with the story. Yeah, the original post got shared a lot. And we were, like I said, getting messages from people we had never heard of before. And at that point, we said, okay, well, maybe we should find a way to move this off of our own personal Facebook pages, you know, and create a group where people can get updates. Yeah. So we created a group that we called South Coast Direct Source Seafood. And that we figured that name is kind of self-explanatory. We're on the South Coast and it's a yeah. way to get directly sourced seafood. So, you know, there's yeah. no weight right off the boat. And so we created a page and the first week we had maybe five or 600 members and we didn't know what to expect. So they had already sold those lobsters from the week before. 
And I went fishing with a very good friend of mine, Mike Ashy, I'm at a place at local. And my uncle went out with his boat, with his, uh, you know, his boss. And an hour before we were supposed to be in, I got a text that said, I hope you guys did well today. There's 45 cars here waiting. Yeah, no. And that was to us like the light bulb moment. We're like, wow, we have not only a way to sell lobsters, but a community that is ready to support. And that's really, you know, that was day one. Yeah. So at this point, no lobster boats are even in the water except these two, because everyone said like, we have no way to sell. We're not going to work for the next few months. Like right. they don't qualify for unemployment. They, you know, they're self-employed. So yeah. they're just, we're going to take the boats out and not lose any money. And so the page had 500 people. We sold out of lobsters in yeah. like an hour and a half. And at that point, it was a first come first serve system. So we had some people waiting two to three hours just because they really wanted to support the fishermen, which was awesome. Yes. And that was actually why I came because I was going yeah. to support you. People just really but wanted I, to support their friends and, you know, But it was just guys. so cool, like just to be in that line and just to see the people and just to see those guys working and Caroline, his wife, Right. Yeah. She's like this teeny little mite of a woman and she's got like these lobsters and she's pulling them in and she's like, you know, so, she, so anyways, it was just so cool. Yeah. yeah. So that was week one and we only had 500 members. So I was like, okay, probably with people sharing these posts, like more people are going to find out about us. And, and yeah. we thought if this page got, I remember my uncle saying, if the page gets to 3000 people, this could potentially outlast COVID because it, yeah. at 500, we're like, okay, these people are here to support us. We said, if we got two to 3,000, if we got 10% of those people that like lobster, we could do yeah. this once a week. And so halfway through the week, the page started getting bigger and bigger. Yeah. And it was my uncle that said, we're going to have to call some of the guys into the water. So actually, we called three other boat captains and we said, put your boat in the water and we'll get your lobster sold. So we'll sell your lobster. Yeah. And everyone was kind of skeptical, but a few of them had stopped down the week before. Right. And so again, this was an experience. This wasn't yeah, just this like was getting in line. This was like... So cool. I mean, I went out and bought a lobster pan because like, I had to get my brothers. I had to trade them to use this pan. I had to trade some of those lobsters yeah. I got, you know. All right. So back to you. So that was week one. And then so week two, we, we figured let's get five boats. And so it was the same thing. We just all five guys were out fishing on the same day. There was yeah. actually 2,400 members on the page the second week. And we gave a time that people would come in. 2,400? Yeah, 2,400 so, so, so second week. So first week they were... 500. 500. Second week, 2,400. Yeah, okay, so, so we were just like, okay, you know, we should be able to sell out five boats. Yeah. And same thing, an hour before anyone was supposed to be in, there was already a line. People were waiting three hours, and they yeah. said, this is a fun thing to do during COVID, and they started waiting. They did, yeah. And um, we had 2,400 and, and, members. And, the, and this, was in, this was in Fairhaven, so yeah. I think the police were cooperative. People, like, there was, yeah. like, different ways that you had to go on the roads, and there was, like, a whole entire, like, yeah. thing going on. And, and this was truly a first-come, first-served. Yes. We were just saying, show up, and we'll sell you lobsters. We Until didn't we know out, yeah. what to do. And so it took about three hours, and it was really good fishing that time of year, and I think it was 2,500 lobsters we sold. Wow, that's incredible. And, yeah, it seemed so incredible, incredible at the so, time. So people who would have no job, they would have no source of income, their boats would be out of the water, yeah. right? Now they're selling 2,500 lobsters in three hours. Yeah. So cool. It was just like, so yeah, five captains. They each had one other guy. So we kept, I think, at that that week was 12 people that wouldn't be working that, you know, the community really just supported and said, you know, this is, we love seafood. Well, and, uh, yeah, by the way, like you're getting lobster right off the boat. Yeah. Like when you go home and you're, and you're cooking that lobster, it's like, the best lobster you've ever had. Yeah. You know? So that was week two. And then week three, we had 6,000 members. So, you know, we had another another big growth. And we tried to do the same thing. And there was a three-mile car line. Did you have three miles? Oh On week three, we had a three-mile car line. It went over the New Bedford Bridge. The town of Fairhaven graciously did a free police detail. Uh-huh. And... It was honestly a little bit of a nightmare because <laughs> we didn't expect it. This was just a, a very organic community growth with a lot of support from the area. And people figured, let's go support the fishermen, get a fresh seafood. It will yeah. taste great. It's a great price. Really can't beat it. And yeah. that was the point that we realized, like, what did we just start? You know, wow. it, the first few weeks were like this. What did you go to college for? Environmental science. Environmental science. By the way, show everybody your mask. We have our masks. I got this book. given to me. It's a lobster mask, and it has little newspaper articles in it, and they just thought it was great because we've had some really good 
newspaper articles written about us from yeah. the community papers as well as you know the area. Yeah, just show so this is this is troy but he said to me and walked in he goes do we have our masks and here's my mask and here's his so we inst instead of using the mask we, we we swabbed up and we got ourselves purified here for you so, anyway back yeah. to that so that was th week three three weeks in. so now i want you to talk about some of the systems that you put into place yeah. okay so that's the thing so they they their idea was way better than they ever could imagine yeah this right? was this was like we were just like, trying to socks off. make a little bit of money for some of these guys and did not expect really the support from the community yeah it's well, what it came to this is a great area to live in it's super community-based but there's not that many people Right, but think so, about this though. Think about, and this is what I like, and this has always been my mantra. Has it not? Like, serve your community, yeah. and then the rest will follow. Yeah. Right, and and be part of your community, and you never have to look for a cold lead anywhere. Right, you never have to go talk to a stranger about selling real estate. Yeah. Right, because we're embedded in their community. Yeah. And I just think it's the greatest example. Okay, so now for you, my business friends out there, tell us about some of the systems you had to put so, in place. So yeah, we have to then figure out a way to organize. A lot of people because the third week we had 7,500 people. After that day, we were over 10,000. And when that happened, well, first the town of Fairhaven, super helpful. The police were awesome. Timothy Cox, who's the harbor master, has been nothing but supportive of this. And without him, we probably wouldn't be able to do it in general because yes. he's the guy kind of in charge of everything down there. And we all met after all the fishermen, me, yep. and my wife, the police, and the harbor master. And we said, How can we make this more efficient so that we're not using up? Um, the police officer as a resource. I mean, yeah. they were very happy to help us that day, but they can't always have five police officers just down there, you know, yeah. Yeah. helping us out. So I said, you know, well, could we avoid a, a, a police detail if we can do pickup windows? You know, like if I give everyone a five to 10 minute window that they show up, yeah. that way it's not a first come first serve. Do we need any help? And they said, you know, of course not. If you can figure that out, that would be awesome. Yeah. So then um, luckily one of my best friends who he was in my wedding. Oh, so Augie? So, no, no, no. Okay, my, which one? Another friend, Mike. His name is Michael DeRocher. He was in my wedding. Oh, so yes. He can make a best friend. He's on that cut. Yeah, um, he, he was. He does He's... web design and IT work. So oh, okay. He said, no problem. I'll do it, you know, for free just to help you guys out. I'll make a site. And it's uh, seafood-direct.com? Yeah. So we just named it Seafood Direct, you know. Yeah. And he made a pretty simple website for us. But what it does is it allows us to update how many lobsters or lobsters or crabs or scallops we have available and it only sells that exact amount so basically a boat it's as simple as this now a boat is on their way in yeah. they're an hour and a half out in the ocean yeah they say hey troy i have 435 lobsters today i go on the website i update 435 i make a post and only 435 lobsters can be sold so yeah. now you know only 50 to 60 people place an order yeah. they then get an email with pickup instructions and a window to show up in and there's never more than five cars there at a time wow and that's so and it's working it's we never have the average weight went from you know weeks one and two an hour and a half down to two minutes wow you know? okay so now back to the business part of this right so this is nail it till you can scale it right so they've nailed it you guys have nailed we, your business model yeah for now right yep. so for now right and so now what has happened these last few weeks so i get a lot of messages since the beginning of this from other fishermen in the area and all over the state that have been asking for help on how to do this and you know how to yeah. make it work in their area so i think it was the third week i helped a kid from the cape he got this started and basically i just he knew what we were doing and he yeah. reached out to me and said is there anything that you could help like where do you make mistakes and you know i call him and we talk about it and i said yeah. avoid this try this you know and it's different yeah. in every harbor because every dock's different yeah but i was able to help him you know avoid some of the real problems we had yeah. And then recently, over the last two weeks, a group of fishermen on the South Shore area Is reached out to me. Um, Marshfield. Marshfield. So okay, so so I'm going to do a shout yeah. out to the South Shore realtors on this, right? So this is happening now in your neighborhood as well. So I'm going to tag you in this, and I'm going to share this over to you because this is a very cool thing for you guys to share to your people, so that you guys can have the yeah. same kind of support that we've had and in energy and just again good things happening in this environment in this yeah. in this time and so really a few of them reached out to me and they were actually um the ones that do knew a few of the fishermen that i help out here yeah and the guys here said yep they're they're great guys like if you help them out they're you know 
they're not going to do the wrong thing. And that's always yeah. a worry in the seafood industry because it's so regulated that, you know, right. we didn't want to help anyone that might be cutting some corners and breaking laws that could make everyone look bad. And, you know, right. yeah. it wouldn't be our fault, but, you know, it's when you have a watchful eye on you, you want to make sure that, you know, yeah. no one ruins yeah. it for everyone. So a few of them reached out to me and said, how can we make this happen on the South shore? Yeah. Because we have the area, there's a lot of people, but we don't know how to do the Facebook. We don't have a website. Yeah. So actually just on Friday night, I helped them create their own Facebook group, which I'm going to help them run. Yeah. And we're going to make a page on my website for them. And um, Very cool. starting on Tuesday, right out of Green Harbor, which is in Marshfield, we'll have fresh lobsters and crabs a few days a week. And it's starting with two boats, but it's probably going to be five next week. That is so cool. So, so now your little idea about you and your uncle helping his uncle out, right, has now led to South Coast. Cape Cod, South Shore, all these lobstermen who would have been sidelined, yeah. right? Significant loss, right? I mean, it's yeah, like, this is this is huge. So now they have a way to do this. Now, do you think that this is going to last after the restaurant's open? We think so. At first, we weren't sure if it would be possible. And now what we found is that I get so many messages every day. And it's usually the day after pickup where someone says, you know, I've never had lobster that tastes that good. I've never had I've never had a scallop that tasted that way because we also have some scallop hooks that are, you know, never frozen, never soaked, anything. And I personally don't eat seafood, so I wouldn't know. <laughs> are you but, serious? Yeah, I don't eat. I've never had a bite of lobster in my life. Are you serious? Yeah. But I get oh these gosh. messages where people say, if I have the ability to keep oh. buying directly from these guys that are putting in the work, I right. never want to buy it another way. And people are starting to realize because we do other posts on the page that aren't just selling, you know, maybe yes, videos on a tough day. Oh my God, beautiful, sunrise. beautiful videos. Yeah. Like you have got to, so listen, I'm going to, when this ends, I'm going to start sharing this out because you guys have got to let people know. We have to get them to 25,000. Did I say 25,000 or 15,000? 15, 15,000. 15,000. 15, 15, 15, 25,000 would be great. Yes, but 15,000 in, in yeah. two months, like I just can't even believe it, you know, and uh yeah. So now, so now we have we have some a new way of doing things. Yeah. And, and you know, awesome. simple systems, <laughs> and uh, you know, and I just think it's so cool. You yeah, know. We, now, we and he's got that. t-shirts. Show them yeah, the t-shirt. Yeah, zoom in so they can see your, your t-shirt. I don't know how to get on there. Yeah. Which way am I going? <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Right. So, so we made t-shirts. T -shirts and, they made t-shirts, and that yes. helped pay. You know, um, for a lot of the internet stuff. Um, the website was built for free, and that's one thing we didn't realize. By the third week, um, we were crashing the system that oh. was in place because it couldn't handle the amount of traffic we were getting every day. Oh my gosh. So we had to upgrade. And so I, said, I had a friend that knows someone that made shirts and said, oh, they'll make you shirts. And basically we sold shirts. He has a best friend that money. makes shirts. Now you might not have <laughs> a best friend. A best friend's friend makes shirts. So, gotcha, you know, yeah. yep. um, so that's so cool. But this is, but this is, this, what I love about this is that you guys all could have just sat at home, you know, drinking right. heavily, you know, just being like, oh, my God, everything's horrendous. Like, you know, everybody's losing their shirts and 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 people are instead you were a bright light during this whole thing. And you are a bright light. Yeah. You know? And and, and it's going to be in a perpetuity, you know, and I think that that's something um, that is just so cool. So. So my business takeaway, I'm going to do my business takeaways and my personal takeaways. And then you're going to give me a couple of your takeaways on this. So the business takeaway is truly, truly think about how it is that you can, you can help people, you know, and I'm going to look at my notes here. See if there's anything else I had here on here. No, I think that's about it. So, so think about how you can help people and doesn't it, isn't it much easier? Like, isn't it so from when you're trying to start your real estate business to now, like, yeah. is it like much easier? Like, just because now you've got like. Tr like the no like trust want to work with you want to be with you the attraction piece of it yeah. you know but it but it comes from a place of sincerity you know yeah. and so so that's the really cool and then on a personal note like do you know how many people's days you have made like that that was the unexpected um, like beautiful outcome, thing especially in the beginning we started this right oh my when gosh you have to go back to leave their houses, you have you to know? go back and read them you have to go back and read all of the notes that people wrote and and the the messages that they shared with them and it's funny because I'm from a family of seven, right? And we all kind of have different family friends, you know, or we're all in different friend yeah. groups. And it was like my sister reaching out to me and my brother and my this, and then and they were all talking about it. And of course, you know, we're all like trying to get bragging rights on how we know them. <laughs> you know, it's, it's just, it was fun. It, it's it was, definitely, 
Unexpected. But even like Cameron, who's who's the woman who was in front, right? Saying that she's got to grab me lobsters and she's going through and, she, and she's like, I'll get them for you. And, and I've only met her like twice. Yeah. I've met her twice and we're both instructors, you know, but it's just like, we've stayed in touch. Yeah. You know, she, we, she invited us yeah. over to a bonfire last night. You know, like it's just a really cool thing that's happening in community. And what I'm going to urge you all to do is I'm going to urge you to look for these kind of nuggets, right? And and let the, let the sun shine in on that from that. Oh, Patty's on. She just said you rock. Yeah. We're going to give her a like. We miss you, Patty. We miss you. you. We wish you were here with us. But we understand because it's just about enough room for both of us. Okay, so what have been your takeaways from all of this that you want to share with people? Um, my main takeaway with, I guess, starting this, which is now a business, is just the power of an organic growth. Power yeah. of organic growth. I love it. Like, especially like it's I guess in the same way as real estate you want people to know what you're doing but you won't want to like make it an overbearing like push towards them you know right. like especially like real estate similar to the seafood where you, you know you're providing a community service in which you know you can help one person or you can help a lot of people and I think the biggest factor on the growth with this whole page was just that it was coming from you know a good place there was no you know, ill intentions. It wasn't to right. make a million but dollars. Most of the time it's just, business, you know, there's not. Like in yeah. real estate, like I always say, like, I feel like we're in the people business, not even in the yeah. house business. So. And I will tell you this, I know this from the people who Troy has helped me with, like the Sylvias, um, Ellen and David Sylvia and the, the the Brattons, right? They remember Troy more than they remember me. They're like, oh that Troy, he was so helpful. Oh Troy. Does Troy, did you like, like, did I share my commission with Troy? Did you, did you take care of Troy? I'm like, I, I hope so. I hope he's okay. You know? <laughs> All right. But so. I don't, I don't know. It's just, we, we started this just to be helpful and try to, you know, help a few guys. But think it's about it. Like, it looks like that. So a couple things would have stopped somebody else. Like yeah. when you guys had the, the three hour wait and the, yeah. and the people who trying to figure out how to make people not be so mad. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. and they weren't even that mad. I don't think, no, like, so, but like, but pleasant. Troy's messages were like, you know, just like, we're going to try to we'll figure this out. Just bear with us. Thank you so much. And then it's like, all right, so we'll figure out a system where they can reserve them. Right. And they can set up times like, like another people, other people would have gone away. Like, thankfully you have all those best friends that can help you, <laughs> but it's like, but a boom, they figured it out and they were nimble. Right. So anyway, I just think it's a great story. What What do you think is going to be next with it? Um, household deliveries. Really? Yeah. <gasps> household deliveries. Or do you deliver to Rochester? Well, everywhere. everywhere. No, it's, is, in, it's a it's plan in that's, you know, in the works where instead of it going through a few different hands to get your, you know, your secret in the store, we're looking and finding a way to make it as simple as I pick it up at the dock and I drive it to your house. You know, older people that maybe don't can't want, go or yeah. don't want to get out of their house and i'm not oh, talking oh. just you know during covid i mean you know some people they live a busy life and they work from home and they have a schedule and they can't find time to drive 30 minutes out of their way and then back to their house you know and so think about this so for my daughter martha who doesn't have a job she could be a driver for all these kids that are oh, home yeah. right all these college kids that are home that don't know what they're doing they could ha now have a purpose and it would be like a win-win, never mind your friends. Like, yeah, right. it's like, so there's all these people who could do the driving and, and then the person who sets up the driving, you know, and it's such a cool thing. Yeah, it's, it seems at this point, like we're here to stay and it might become the new normal. I think I need a t-shirt, by the way. I haven't ordered one yet. Can definitely get yes, you can you set me up on a t-shirt? All right, I'm gonna check to see if you guys have any friends. Um, <laughs> so you also solved a problem that people didn't know they had, which was uh, as, <laughs> inability to get uh super fresh seafood yeah right we didn't even know that they didn't have super fresh seafood until you tasted it yeah so no. patty good point That's he solved a problem that we didn't even know we had right and yet when it was solved it's now like people need it now yeah. right and i'm going to give you a like on that one good yeah. job and ed pedro says how about marlboro marlboro haha -ha. well you well, know what I'll, I'll, when we get to the point that there's deliveries we're gonna find a way to get it everywhere. I right. have people contacting and say, can you ship it us lobsters to California? There's people, you know, wow. from, we have one member, I forget where it was from, um, somewhere in Asia, and they were contacting us just saying they saw our page, it just popped up on their Facebook, and you know. Yeah. And, they're and that's why, along. can I so tell you why? Right. Because, all right, so Mark Zuckerberg says, and then we'll, we'll wrap this up, because it's been, a, we're, we're, a hitting our, we're hitting our time out. So 
Mark Zuckerberg said, we want groups. Groups start community. We want to, we want groups. And everyone's like, boo, groups, right? We want to be, be able to put stuff, you know, we want to be able to have just our, our profile in people's yeah. feeds and now. And they're like, that doesn't happen anymore. It's the community groups that Mark Zuckerberg loves. And again, back to that 15,000. Okay, so Ed, Patty, whoever else comes on this in the replay, you've got to share this out. We got to get them to 15,000, yeah. right? That would be super cool because we'd be like, that'd be a bold number, wouldn't it? Yeah. All right, friends, thank you so much. Do you have any last parting words for them? Um, I don't. Thank you for yeah. letting me talk about thank this. You. It's been fun. Yeah, and you guys, you know what? I can just tell you that everybody upon everybody is so amazingly impressed with this, right? With the whole entire system, right? That's the other thing. Like, like they're not like Troy system or, or the Durr system. Like, they're not yeah. like that. It's like this thing that, like, this community thing. Like, you, you guys are so humble. You know, and, and and I know that probably talking about this yeah. and success is kind of a little <laughs> awkward, right? People love it. And I would love for you guys to push them to the next level because this kind of thing will help on those days that you think that there's no shining stars. There's a shining red star in the sky and it's called a lobster, damn it. <laughs> All right, we'll see you next week when Patty's back. Thanks so much. And thanks for joining us, Patty and Ed. We'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.